Hey guys, Audrey here. So I'm so happy to be able to present this to you. I've got this great Best Tech arm that allows me to do this top-down angle so I can show you the inside of the planner in a way where it's not looking backwards or it's not easy to read. So anyway, this is the Blue Nostalgia cover in the Coil Bond Edition. I'm really, really falling in love with this. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so... Here we go, we have a table of contents, so if you ever need to find something very quickly, of course you can find it there in the table of contents. We have an introduction where you know, I just share some thoughts to help you get started so you can really set effective goals, goals that really mean the most to you and not just things to keep you busy. We're all busy enough, you don't need more. And one thing I like to feature actually is right here in the beginning, we have a quote from Natalina Rice, who actually was just with Lindsay Detweiler in, um, at a winery in Pennsylvania. So that was really cool to see them there together. So all of the quotes in here are from people who are in the Author Transformation Alliance. So it's people, real authors that you can reach out to who are on the same journey with you, who have learned things, who are learning things, who are getting out there more and whose success is climbing. So anyway, um, and then we have my vision, here we go. And this is a section where you get really clear on what is actually most important to you, what you really wanna do with your life and what you can do this year, and especially the rest of this year, or when you get this journal, this planner, what you can do in the next 12 months that will make you feel the most accomplished. See, you don't want every single year to be exactly the same. This coming 12 months should be better than the last 12 months. You should always be moving forward rather than stagnating. If you're serious about making this a business, if you're serious about, serious about selling books and sharing your stories with the world. So this whole section is designed to do that. Um, for example, here we get clear on how many, after you've done the, the foundational work, how many manuscripts do you want to draft? How many um, works do you want to publish in the coming 12 months? How many copies do you want to sell or total p page reads you want or total downloads? You know, whatever metric you feel most aligned with, you go ahead and put that there. New followers and email subscribers or customer reviews, whatever it is, we got to get clear after setting that foundation. And it's okay to set a number to that because that gives us something to strive for. If we just say, I want to sell as many as possible, then we're not really going to have um, the same kind of fire as we would if we say, I want to sell 100 in the first 30 days of launch or 200 or 1,000 or whatever your case may be. But having a real number here make sure that you are aligned and you are set up to set real goals and space them out throughout the coming 12 months. And speaking of those goals, here's where you define them. So you pick the top three most important things in your life, especially in your writing life in this case, and you put them right here, right? Or actually, sorry, you put them right here at the bottom where the big bolded boxes are. And then it's almost like reverse engineering, except we know the end state where, where we wanna go. But we have to start up here where we are. What is the first thing you can do for each of these goals in order to reach them? And then you list out the steps as necessary in these boxes, and I gave you plenty of space, so if it's a, a step with multiple kind of tasks in it, you can fit it all in the box. So, um, but anyway, the point is you have to be able to lay out what needs to happen in order for you to reach your goal so that you can map it out on this side of the page. So what month does this task need to be done? What month does this task need to be done? You know, when can these things be done? How can we map out our goals to give, our, give ourselves a more clear idea of when things need to happen? Again, if we're just kind of drifting and hoping lightning strikes, then nothing's gonna happen. You have to be active in pursuing your goals in order to achieve what you dream of. So anyway, after you've done that work of reverse engineering your goals, it's time to evaluate them. After you've looked at all the steps, you're like, wow, is this something I really wanna do? Or hey, maybe I can do them sooner. Maybe it doesn't take me an entire year to accomplish goal number three. Maybe it only take me three months. So that's where you can sit down and really explore through, um, you know, just kind of journaling activity here, evaluating your goals. 
And if you're leaving comments, keep leaving them. Leave any questions, I will address them at the end. Um, right now I can't see them because I'm not facing or not looking at the camera or the phone. So anyway, and then once you've gone through that work of writing out those goals, it's time to refine those 12 month goals. So here we go, because um, this is kind of like your, your sketch, you know, you just kind of sketch it out and here's where you get really serious about, okay, now that you've evaluated your goals and explored how much that means to you, how it's important to you, here we go. 12 months goal, 12 month goal, what is the goal and what are your steps to achieving them and what are your target completion dates? So you write all that out here. So um, again, you're getting really serious and the more you write this down, the more committed you're going to be to it. So this is a really important section. I recommend no one skips this. You may think you're clear on your goals, but until you really explore that, you know, you might be, that might be your missing piece. So anyway, here we go, we have my manuscripts and this wonderful quote from Phyllis Duncan. When people ask me why I write, my answer is for the same reason I breathe to live. So great quote from Phyllis there. Um, and then this section is just about tracking your manuscripts. So I give you a few pages to track your manuscripts, um, the unpublished ones here. So your synopsis and then why the story is special to you or why it's important and writing this down can help reinvigorate you for that story if you feel stuck on a manuscript a lot of people hit a wall and they kind of have to shift their focus to another story well sometimes if you can write this out you can get reinvigorated about it and then sometimes if you are surrounded by a pile of works in progress then you can actually go through and look at this and say, why did I think this story was important to me? And it can help you pick which one to pursue. So anyway, this just gives you kind of a little um, space to write out your estimated expenses for the project and things like that. So you have total five here. Um, this is you know, what I found was the, the average for everybody was about five manuscripts every 12 months. If you are publishing a book a month, then, you know, you can always add pages in here like Mary Decker does. Um, or if you get the version I'm about to put on Etsy before the end of the day, probably in about an hour here, then you can just print multiple copies of my manuscripts and put it in your three ring binder if that's how you're doing it. So anyway, then we have an editing process section, and this is just all about how you go through your own editing process. And it's actually really powerful to write this out, what your process is, so you can develop a system for editing. And like I said before, um, part of treating this like a business instead of a hobby is all about developing systems. So develop a system for your editing as well. Um, but anyway, this just goes through some ways you can refine your system. This is your checklist for me. Um, you know, I have things like I use dark and old. Those are two of my words that I use way too much uh, when I write. So this goes on my editing checklist, but you may have other things, um, you know, if it's passive voice or if it's tense or point of view or something like that, then you put those things that you know you, you often struggle with right on your editing checklist. So when you're going through your your own editing before you hand it off to an editor, you already know what to look for in order. So anyway, and this is a space for your editors. So those five most important manuscripts for the year, this is where you can start, um, you can write them out real quick, the title, the genre, the length, and then start evaluating up to three different editors and get their quotes, get the, you know, go through a sample edit with them and things like that so that you know that you're getting, um, you're working with the right person for that manuscript. So anyway, just like I gave you five places for manus manuscripts, I give you the five manuscripts for your, you know, editor evaluations as well. And then we have story ideas. All right. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Story ideas. This is my favorite section and thank you to McKenna Dean for offering this awesome quote here. And this is where I live. I love being able to write down my story ideas here. Often when I'm just like driving or when I'm um, folding the laundry or doing something mundane like that or washing dishes, I suddenly get this great story idea and I'll rush to my journal, which is always nearby, and I will write it down, well, my planner. So 
working title if I have a working title for it, or I can just sketch something there that makes me think of it. And then I write down whatever I'm thinking about would be cool for that story, or even, even if it's just a character I'm thinking about. So I love the stories ideas, story ideas section. Again, it's my favorite, one of my favorite places in the planner. And then here's a space for reading lists. And I found that um, for me and for quite a few other people, it's nice to have a digital reading list, but it kind of just grows and you don't do anything with it. But when you actually say, hey, I'm gonna read one personal fun book a month and one professional book a month to, for either craft or for the business side or whatever, you can get really serious about doing your homework and of course improving improving your knowledge. So this is for you to delegate to yourself what needs to be read each month in order to one, have fun and two, um, you know, really improve your craft or improve your business acumen. Uh, this is your extra to be read list. So if you know that there are books that you really want to read, it commits it so much better to memory and you know that you really want to read it if you're willing to write it down. And this is like your trophy list. This is if um, you all the books you finish. So we know that we finish some things that were never on our reading list and we finish um, you know, some really important ones that were on our reading list. So I love that section too, but my expenses, great quote for here from AC Nixon, if you want your writing to make money like a business, then you have to treat it like a business. And a big part of that is tracking your expenses. So you have 12 pages in here month by month, and I haven't ever gotten to where I overfill this. So hopefully you don't either, because that's a lot of spaces for you guys to fill up, but um, there are 12 pages here, one for each month that the calendar covers, or the planner covers, and you write down all of your expenses in here. Again, this does really slide beautifully. And then we get to your marketing plan. So right here is just a quick overview of how you should approach marketing as an author, um, you know, starting with, with a, a good foundation. But then map your releases. And this relates, of course, to our top three goals. But if you are doing one a month or one every three months, you can map your releases and then also map the activities you need to do around those releases in order to promote them properly and ensure their success. So like I would put launch here, launch month here. Um, this would be pre-launch. So this would all be, be all about getting reviews, getting blurbs, getting um, bookstagrammers to share the, share the message, you know, stuff like that. So, and then of course, launch month would all be about parties or giveaways or whatever it is. And then post launch month for me, as is all about, of course, rewarding people or finding ways to reward people who finish reading the book. But anyway, you can do it however is best for your authorship. Everybody has a different thing. Some people do one a year, some people do two, some people release monthly. So um, this is just a really good way to map out your releases and get a really good overview of what your publishing schedule looks like for the coming 12 months. All right, and again, planning your releases. This is all, all a whole section just um, dedicated to planning your releases and preparing for that. And this is visibility growth because after you know what you want to publish like and how often you want to release, then you know what your visibility has to be like. And that's, you know, marketing, your social media marketing, your following, your email list. That's all these things. Um, we need to increase them if we want to keep having um, successful launches or have more successful launches than we've had before. Um, some people love to blog, so I really loved coming up with this section right here. 52 spots, 52 weeks in a year. This is a space for you to write out possible blog topic ideas. Um, and of course, I give recommendations in here for how to do that because sometimes, you know, it's the week that we're supposed to blog and then, or the day, and we're like, I don't know what to write about. Well, if you do it ahead of time and give yourself some topics to write about, then when blog day comes or blog week comes, then you're going to be ready. So collaboration op opportunities, it's really good to think ahead about what other authors in your genre or... Um, you know, influencers in your space that you can collaborate with for newsletter swaps, social media shout outs, stuff like that, so that you can reach your audience, reach your future readers who don't know about you yet. 
This is all about your social media plan, developing um, a long-term plan. And this is something you don't have to use. Not everybody's ready for this. But once you start getting to a space where you have a large following, you know the importance of long-term planning. You know that, well, this month is going to be about, you know, book one. This um, month is going to be about this new release. And this month is going to be about my backlist or whatever, you know, so you can have a full year of calendars and get that social media planning sketched out. Again, this is for more it's advanced social media marketers, Lindsay being one of them. She is such a rock star at this. But anyway, um, so you have the space there to do that there. Now here's paid advertising. It's really important to think about what kind of budget you're gonna have for the coming 12 months if one at all, and then where you can get the training on how to use the type of ads that you want to run. Because let me tell you, as much as they try, the people who are engineering and designing this stuff, they already know ads, so they don't make it as intuitive as they try to make it. It is not intuitive, it is not easy, um, and so you need to get training on that. Um, your year. So this is where the year starts. You know, we, we start over here with this beautiful quote from Courtney Constantine. Dreams are nothing until you chase them. No one will do that. So get running or do that for you. So get running. Um, so anyway, but this is all about just a little pep talk before you sketch out your year. And this is very different from the social media planning section. You know that each month you're going to have different priorities. If you have to pick one priority this coming month, what is it going to be? And this, of course, should be related to your release and your, your publishing schedule. So if this month is all about finishing edits, then this month is about publishing and release. And then the next month is about writing the next book. Then you can at least get an overview of what needs to happen, as well as sketch out any important dates, like you know you have a deadline here, or you know you have a birthday here and you're not going to, or a vacation something you need to plan around. You can get those things right in there so you have an overview of is my intended publishing schedule really gonna work or do I need to space it out a little more, which is more often than not the case. So again, you have 12 months of this. Um, and then we start off with your 90 day goals. What are the top three goals for the coming 90 days? And again, just like we did with the yearly goals, what steps do you need to take to achieve them and you have to assign target completion dates. Again, we're working in 90 days, so if you can assign these target completion dates to make sure that you reach the, or achieve these steps before that goal's target completion date, then that is just very, very powerful stuff. Not only writing it down, but then having it cemented in your head and placed in your calendar. All right, guys, so that's where we start with month one. You get a beautiful quote every single month. Um, again, words of wisdom and inspiration from other authors, encouraging you to be authentic, encouraging you to keep your head down and keep moving forward because you can succeed, you will succeed. So first we start with a monthly reflection. How did last month go? go? Did you get the sales you wanted? Um, what challenges did you face and what lessons did you learn, with them, learn from them? And where this came from was my monthly goal setting um, I found that this was very, very helpful for people. And this is something that when you are working with a personal coach, um, you know, a career coach, a writing coach, a writing career coach, so you're working the business side and the creative side, when you're working with a coach or a mentor, this is something you guys have to go through. What was last week like? What was the last two weeks? You know, depending on your interval with that coach, you go through stuff like this because you have to evaluate where you're coming from before you can set your goals moving forward. So anyway, and this is something that is consistently done in businesses, again, very corporate, um, almost corporate style, except we're not doing this to check a box. We're doing this for growth. We're doing this because it is powerful. So once we've gone through the reflection, then we set our priorities for the month. Again, this relates to um, the year, whatever we said the priority was, you know, is that the priority my primary focus for this month is, you know, finishing the edits projects I need to work on, finishing the edits, preparing the launch party, um, reaching out to bloggers, things like that, your writing goal, and then of course your tasks for the month 
and the target completion dates. If you know your editing has to be done or your edits have to be finished by the 17th, then you put that down there. That's a hard date that you need to keep in mind. And then of course, once you have these tasks and target completion dates written out, you can say, oh man, okay, I know which one is most important, which one is most pressing. So then you don't get bogged down in all the nonsense work that, you know, the world's not gonna stop if it's not done. And of course, over here we have the sales goals, what title you are, what title here, your goal, whether it's sales, downloads, page reads, um, whatever, right here, whatever metric you prefer, and then the target number. So if you want um, your first book to have um, sales of 100, okay, then you just write that down there. And I gave you space for up to 10 titles. Um, some people have more books, some people have fewer. I felt 10 was a good compromise as well is you're really gonna wanna think about focusing on just a couple each month to really push or promote. So anyway, um, your advertising plan, and this is something uh, for more advanced user, if you're using advertising, or especially as it relates to here, um, you know, once you've set your sales goals, then you can determine your advertising plan because if you really are pushing 10 books, you might just be set up on um, AMS ads. So if you're using AMS ads and then um, you know you want this many sales of 10 different titles and you know you have to um, set up the ads for all those different titles. So how much of a budget do you need in order to hit that target? So anyway, um, being specific, this is all about you know just really getting clear on your advertising plan instead of just throwing spaghetti at the wall. Let me see if there are any comments that I can answer. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. I love it. I love it. I love it. You guys. Awesome. Thank you. So, all right. Okay. So anyway, um, it's really important to get clear on your advertising um, and what you need to do, but here's a blogging and collaboration plan. Again, not everybody blogs, but if you want to collaborate, this is a great place to think about what to do. It doesn't have to be a blog post here. It can just be social media collaboration, whatever fits for your situation. But if you do blog, then here you go. Here's where you sketch out your ideas. And again, you can pull from your blog topic list or you can say, hey, I'm going to collaborate with this other author and we're going to do a blog interview or we're going to do, um, you know, she's going to guest blog for me. Then there you go. And then here's your newsletter plan. And what I love about this section is you write out your main topic and then write out your subtopics. And then after a week or so, go ahead and hit, you know, go ahead and record your open rate and your click through rate and the, that email. And then that way you can get an idea of how your newsletters are going. And if you're improving in how you um, manage and track and create your newsletters, or if you need help, if you're stagnating or if your open rate is decreasing, then you know you need to fix your subject lines. Uh, if your click-through rate is just suffering, then you know you need to improve your copywriting on the inside of the email. So anyway, here's your social media plan for the month. This gives you some ideas. Um, this is something that can guide you if you're stuck and you don't know what to post, then just use this as a guide to keep your content varied, just like we talked about in the Reader Attraction Challenge, as well as making sure that you're still focusing on sharing about your book. And here's your monthly overview. Thank you to Judy Young for this recommendation because she was confusing Monday, or this block, this column from Monday, and I was like, oh my gosh, they do look kind of the same. So um, what I did here was I added, you know, we have weekly focus, but sometimes that breaks in down into three tasks or three goals or something like that. So I gave you three lines here to sketch out your month, your month, uh, monthly overview, and then write in what you know is going to be most important that week. So you don't go in blind. You go in absolutely knowing what you have to do to reach your goals. What is most important? Sometimes it's not that blog. Sometimes it's not the newsletter. Sometimes it is figuring out how to promote and sell your book. So getting training or finishing the edits or um, hitting the publish button, whatever it is that you have to do, you know, you can put those three things down there to make sure that you are staying laser focused throughout the week. And here we go. Here is the weekly layout. And I really hope you guys like this. Um, I really, really love this. And I'll 
wish I could zoom in a little bit more, but over here, we, again, we have that space for the weekly priority. So if you're going through the week and you need to add something here, at least when this is laid open on your desk, you can see it. You can absolutely see what you wrote as being most important. And that way, when you're looking at your planner, when you're looking at this week all laid out, you keep getting that reminder that the busy work isn't important. It's achieving these top things. I have a space here for you to write your writing goal, whether it's in time or pages or whatever you want, your editing goal if you have one, visibility goals, who your writing buddy is and when you're meeting them. And because it's something we should really be doing, whether it's you know asking for reviews or um, asking to be featured or guest blog, then we should be sending out pitches. And what we have down here at the bottom is a space for your notes throughout the week, things you need to keep track of, wellness goals, because let's face it, <laughs> we still have so, you know, we have to be taking care of ourselves and getting healthy if we're going to be performing at or, or operating at peak performance, especially because we're writers, we need our brain, our brains functioning well. So wellness goals for the week, this for me typically is a weight loss goal or you know drink more water or cheat on my diet less you know stuff like that so and this is a space to you know ask you what are you doing this week to honor the four most important priorities in your life and for me that's me i have to take care of myself so i can take care of other people um my family being my children my husband and then my um my business and my writing so the, those are the four, four most important areas in my life. Actually, it's probably school and writing. So, and I write those down and say, okay, for me, I'm making sure that I, you know, have time alone. Um, for school, I'm making sure I get my stuff done. For family, we're going to the park and we're spending more time reading together. Um, you know, stuff like that. So it's it's a good place to really um, get deliberate about what you're doing to honor what's most important in your life. And this is a reminder over here, is your next week's social media schedule? What was your biggest accomplishment this week? Because we had to be able to give ourselves a pat on the back. And if you're working with a coach or if you have worked with a coach, then you know this is something that is reiterated a lot. We have to, we have to praise our own successes. We have to acknowledge and recognize our own successes. Did you spend time with your loved ones? Did you have time to rest and renew yourself? And then, of course, because we're writers and I love adding this up, your total words written for the week and your total page as pages edited if you are in editing mode. But anyway, so that is that all the way until you get to the new month. And there we go, month two, and you can write the month name right in there, just like for month one. But let's skip ahead to, there we go, we're gonna go to, oh, I think I passed it. Oh my goodness, I gotta find it. At least it's easy to go through. I think I, no, okay. Let's see here. Here we go. And just like any business, we have a proper quarterly review. Again, it starts with this beautiful quote. The first quarter review quote is actually from Taylor Ray Davis, who is a story coach. Um, and she's all about messaging and branding and things like that. She is awesome. So just like with our monthly, we do a quarterly reflection before we start uh, moving into our new quarter goals. But it's really important to say, hey, what were my goals and did I achieve them? And then of course, I do have a space down here like, hey, what was your 90 day total spent on paid advertising? Because a lot of people, if you ask them, they don't know. Um, and as a business owner that you are, you should be able to write this down and that way you'll know it right off hand because you're keeping track we can't improve what we don't measure and if we're not keeping track of money we're spending on paid advertising how are we going to know if we're in the green or not so anyway so there's that we have a space for you to look at your stories over the past 90 days how much your visibility has increased to your potential your target audience um, and this is a space that everybody really seems to love your quarterly progress and you can Go ahead and color in the blocks or use stickers and this gives you kind of that 
artistic creative outlet right in your planner um, where you can just stop and, and get a little colorful with this to track what you know the progress that you have made over the past 90 days and then we get clear on the goals for the next 90 days and that leads into the next month where you can pop these numbers into your monthly overview take your monthly overview and pop that into your weeks that's how I do it month by month I make sure my whole month of weekly layout is filled in with those important dates before I get started so anyway I really hope you guys like this we have um, at the very end we have uh, after the fourth quarter reflection you have your year fulfilled and so this isn't just like the same thing as the quarterly or monthly reflection this is deeper this is a lot deeper in order to of course we want to cat be a catalyst for the most as much growth as possible and we want you to reflect even if there are things that you didn't achieve in the past 12 months that's because things evolve and you need to cut yourself slack sometimes sometimes things evolve to where your goals changed completely and you need to recognize that as well so that's okay so this just goes really deep in helping you digest the past year and know that you worked hard so that it was different from the years before different in a better way so anyway 12 month reflection again this is space to journal and really get deep on what the last year meant to you after the guided journey here so anyway your progress this is your yearly progress you can add all that up and have this beautiful visual reminder of how much you accomplished in the year um, and then my musings wonderful quote here from chelsea and then you have plenty of space so if you're um, you know going through your week and you have different things you write out I write notes here I write plans for my launch parties and plans for my reader parties in this section um, that way you know I just kind of sketch out how a schedule will go or if I have marketing ideas that come up then I write them there oh I know what that was. oh that was chopped out of there so anyway um, in the very back I have um, the acknowledgments where I list off all the authors of the quotes in this book and then of course there's a section about me and some more resources to help you along your journey and that is all my dears okay I really really hope that you guys enjoyed this let me see if there are any questions I don't really see any questions right now so what I'm gonna do is your prompt for this video is I want to know what part of this planner is your favorite and remember guys um go ahead and answer that so that you're eligible for the four o'clock prize um during that contest and then um you know just remember that if you do purchase a planner today you will get 30-day complimentary membership to the author transformation alliance where you'll have complete access to our entire library of full courses and guest expert master classes on everything from writing and editing to publishing and marketing including classes on advertising which i know everybody needs help with you don't have to pay hundreds of dollars to learn how to advertise um, it's just $37 a month and if you purchase a planner you get your first month free and you can take whatever classes that you want So anyway guys, I'm gonna pop off here. I can't wait to see what y'all thought of this. All right. Bye